LED light expert here. Uh, we are here on a tennis court. And if you're wondering why, why we're on a tennis court, we're gonna tell you today. Um, we're all around with lighting. Um, we wanted to show you what sport lighting would be about, lighting up courts, um, give you a real good understanding of foot candles and lux, um, the brightnesses you're gonna see in a lot of places like tennis courts, basketball courts, uh, baseball fields, softball fields. Um, give you a good example so you can understand where lux or foot candles will be in different areas of different fields. Uh, go over crossover lighting a little bit and just give you a good background on everything when it comes to sports lighting. LED light expert here. Uh, we wanted to go over sports court lighting with you. Um, so we're, we're gonna show you a few examples here today. Uh, we're in the middle of a tennis court here. Uh, got about six, we'd say, um, thousand watt metal halides here, uh, lighting up this court um, down on the meter in the middle of the court without my shadow in the way. We're looking at about 34 foot candles. Uh, around that range, 33, 34. Um, as we move a little farther away, you might see we get outside the court, might get a little closer to 20, 25 near the edges of the court, but 30, um, pretty standard lighting for a tennis court that you're seeing here. Um, what you'd see in most sports, uh, basketball courts, anything like that, 30s, about standard for recreational use. Okay, so, now we're showing you the actual meter reading here. Um, we've got about 338, 337 um, lux on this, which would convert over to about 34 lumen, or 34 foot candles that is, uh, just to let you see what it looks like here. Uh, we are going to move and get this out here on the outside of the court to show you about where we'd be at in here. As we get over to some areas on the side, um, it drops down to about, actually about 31, 31 foot candles. Um, so it's only dropped a little bit while we're still in the court. Might hit some, some spots, but you can also see uh, the shadows all around. Not quite what they were on the side. You're not seeing the shadows to either side of me, um, but you are seeing them up and down. So there's some good crossover lighting here to prevent the shadows. All right, now we can see on the, the back line of the court here, uh, down to about 26 foot candles, um, 260, 260 plus lumens on this, uh, lux on this. So lost a little bit as we're getting outside of the court. Um, but still feels about the same brightness as we're out here. Um, a lot of people probably wouldn't even notice the difference on the, the different areas of the court, but you can see the difference as you move around, depending on the lighting, how it's done. Whereas closer to the middle, you've got all the lights coming in. Out here, we've only got lights on one side. So we're losing a little bit of brightness as we're moving over here to the, the side of the court with less lights. Okay, we are here on a baseball field, just to give you a grasp of some of the lighting on the field. Um, this field itself has, looks like 24 lights, um, maybe 1500 watt metal halides, uh, 24 lighting up the field. Um, probably looking somewhere around 30 to 40 foot candles um, on the infield, uh, maybe 20 to 30 in the outfield around that range. Uh, one thing you will notice if you're looking around at some of the players, you can see the shadows. Um, there is, there's some shadowing, uh, but we've got light coming down from four different angles, uh, lights all over the place, really helping to prevent um, heavy shadowing anywhere. Um, this player in the outfield that's closest to the camera only has a couple lights really pointed down at him, so you see a little bit stronger shadow. But if you look at the center fielder, on the other hand, uh, you're not getting the shadows in field. You're getting some shadows, but it's still minute compared to what you would expect. Um, 
with these 1500 watt uh, metal halides that are likely lighting up this field. Um, as we say, you're getting ideally probably around 30 or 40 foot candles on the field. Uh, some of the, the averages we're seeing around the nation uh, for Little League and a lot of recreational use is maybe around 40 to 50 foot candles on the infield, uh, closer to 30 on the outfield. Um, it's about standard for most recreation. Um, as, a, as a comparison, when you think about Major League Baseball, their requirements are 250 foot candles on the infield and 200 on the outfield. So extremely bright, but you've also got camera work. Uh, they don't want any shadows on the players. You know, professional sports are gonna have a little bit more into there, but standard for most recreational leagues, little leagues, all that kind of stuff. You're looking around uh, 50 on the infield, 30 on the outfield. On the field now, uh, just to show you what we'd be looking at on the fields. Um, typical fields, uh, a pole about halfway between home plate and first or third, uh, just past the backstops. Another pole on each side, a little bit farther down, and a couple poles on the outside here. Uh, it's a pretty large field here. Um, we counted probably about 40 lights here. Um, 1500 watt metal halides, what we're guessing on these. Okay, just showing you where the foot candles are here uh, as we're getting to home plate or at the pitcher's mount. Um, actually about 35 foot candles, 350 uh, lux on this. Um, um, normal infield might be a little bit brighter than this, but you know, if I was on a field like this, I'd say let's play if we're playing recreation. Might want a little bit more if you're playing on a standard field for any kind of little league uh, or league play. Okay, as we're moving towards the outfield, we're a little past where second base would be. You can see that our, our Lux or foot candles have dropped. We're down to about 26, 25 foot candles. So we've lost uh, five to 10 foot candles as we're moving out. I suspect we'll see a little bit more drop as we get towards the outfield. Okay, so we're showing you in a basketball court here. Um, just so you can see, we've got about 32 fixtures up here, all with six T8s in each one. Uh, pretty well lit basketball court. Um, with the meter on the floor, we're reading about a little over 30, 32 foot candles, 320 lux uh, in that range. Um, not a lot of shadows. If you look around me, you can see some shadowing a little bit directly underneath me, but you're not seeing shadows spread out. So they did a really good job with crossover lighting in here. Um, LEDs could definitely help out on the efficiency, um, but just to get a good grasp of where you are with lighting in a, a traditional court of any kind, volleyball, anything like that indoors, about 30, 30 foot candles right about where you want to be really good lighting in here like i said no shadows really good crossover lighting so always keep an eye out for that um, we'll get you a close-up here of the meter just so you can see it I'm trying not to get have my own shadow get in the way here uh, but you can see just about 31 foot candles um, my shadow is probably affecting this a little bit um, but pretty good lighting in here all around uh, and once again you're not seeing much for crossover lighting or for shadows because of the good crossover lighting. So always something to keep in mind when you're doing any kind of lighting, especially for sports. Okay, if you're wondering why I'm standing under this wall pack here, we wanted to show the differences on some of the wall packs. Uh, this one right here is probably about a 400 watt metal halide. You can see it's got a glass lens on it, about 18 inches across. Um, they use this one specifically because this one projects out a little bit. Uh, if we were just trying to cover this area, you'd have something a little more of a down light pointing down. Um, but because there's no lights on the other side of this driveway here, um, they did want to get some light in the area. So they're using a wall pack that has a, uh, some out push on it. So you get some light out on the street and close. Uh, if you were looking for something a little bit if we're just trying to light this walkway, say there was a, a, a walkway going along the building here, you get a light that has keeps the focus down much closer to the building. Um, you can go with lower wattage, um, so that way you're not wasting the electricity. Um, 
when you don't need it. Uh, but in this case, they did want to push some light out. Uh, that's why we're seeing the light out. Um, just with this one, I think it's probably getting closer to the end of its life. Uh, down the floor, we're probably maybe 10 feet high on this. Uh, maybe a little bit higher than that, may or maybe nine feet. Got about uh, five foot candles on the ground, so not too bright on this one. Um, definitely losing some power as it goes, but we are seeing a lot more light spreading out across the street with this. Okay, we wanted to show you how the light changes as we move away from this wall pack um, that's pointed out uh, on the ground right next to it. We were looking at about five foot candles up here, uh, quite a bit closer to my waist. Um, we're looking at about 10 foot candles as we're moving out here, but it does change significantly. I'm down to about three foot candles out here, moving out four, a couple shadows getting in the way, two foot candles, one, and we are getting to where we have maybe about 0.5 as we get to the other side of the road. So we are getting some light out here, um, but not quite what you'd want.